Okay, the last two types of special quadrilaterals we're going to study are kites and trapezoids. Let's start with kites. A kite is defined as a quadrilateral with exactly two pairs of congruent consecutive sides. All of you know what a kite looks like. It's important to understand, though, that all four sides are not equal. So these two are equal, and those two are equal, but they're not equal to each other. So these are two pairs of disjoint congruent con consecutive sides. So a kite is never a parallelogram or any of the special types of parallelograms. So it's off by itself. It's one special type of quadrilateral. There's a few properties of kites that you need to be aware of. First of all, the diagonals are perpendicular. So in the center there, you'll have all right angles. Second, exactly one pair of opposite angles are congruent, and those are called the non-vertex angles. So the angles we're talking about for that are those two angles. So picture those without the diagonals. One of the diagonals bisects the opposite angles. So in this picture, this angle is equal to this angle. And this one up here is congruent to this one up here. But they're not congruent to each other, so those top two are not congruent to those bottom two. Another property? One of the diagonals is the perpendicular bisector of the other diagonal. So in this picture, This segment is congruent to this segment. So the longer diagonal is cutting the shorter one in half, going right through the midpoint of the shorter diagonal. So those are all the things that you should be aware of in terms of kites and properties for kites. So let's look at an example. Here we have a kite, and I give you certain information. And then, I'd like you to find all those values. So my suggestion whenever you see a problem like this is don't worry about the specific pieces we're trying to find at first. Let's label the picture with everything you have and from that let's try and label everything else in the picture we can come up with. Then we'll worry about answering the questions. Okay, so the measure of angle EKT is 27. That's that angle there. So right away you should think, oh, I know that the one next to it is also 27. Next given, angle KET is 104. We do that in a different color. K to E to T, that's this entire angle, is 104 degrees. So I know that on the other side, that entire angle is also 104 degrees. The next given, segment KI is 8 units long. So therefore, I know that KE is 8 units long. And the last given, IT is 12. So I know the other side, ET, is also 12. Now, what else do I remember about kites? I remember the diagonals are perpendicular. So, I have four right angles inside there. So, what else can I figure out? Well, wait a minute. In this triangle here, 
I have a 27 degree angle and a 90 degree angle. So that means I can figure out the last angle, 63 degrees. Because 63 plus 27 is 90, plus 90 is 180. So therefore on the other side, I know this one here is 63 degrees. Now, that angle I marked in purple is 104. So 63 plus 41 would make 104. So now I found that angle. And on the other side, this is also 41. And now looking at one of these longer triangles in the bottom section, I've got a 41 degree and a 90 degree, so I can find the third angle. And that's going to be 49 degrees. Because 49 plus 41 is 90, plus 90 is 180. So this one's also 49 degrees. Okay, now I'm ready to answer the questions for the problem. first one we need to find is the length of ET. Well, in my picture that says 12. Next, the length of segment KE. That's 8. Angle KNE. K to N to E. That's a right angle. 90 degrees. Angle KEN. K to E to N. That one we figured was 63 degrees. Angle NET, N to E to T, that's 41 degrees. Angle ETI, E to T to I, oh, that's both of these, so I have to add 49 plus 49, and that's 98 degrees. And lastly, angle EKI, that's both of those at the top, so 27 plus 27. There you go. So given a little bit of information and a picture of a kite, you should be able to figure out all the other information. All right, the other quadrilateral that we want to focus on, the last one of our group, is called a trapezoid. And a trapezoid has exactly one pair of parallel sides. So we can't have two. If it has two pairs of parallel sides, we know it's a parallelogram. Now there's a lot of terminology with the parts of a trapezoid. The two sides that are parallel are called the bases. In this picture, the bases are top and bottom. This picture could be rotated 90 degrees, and then our bases would actually be the left and right sides. So don't think the bases are always the top and bottom. It's whichever two are parallel. The other two sides are called the legs. They may or may not be equal in length, but they're definitely not parallel. And then we have two pairs of what's called base angles. So with one of the bases, we have a pair of angles. And then with the other base, we also have a pair of angles. So what are the properties of a trapezoid? Well, it's not very interesting, to be honest with you. The only thing we have is that the same side interior angles are supplementary. But we already knew that with parallel lines. We know that this angle and this angle add up to 180. So they're not very interesting, and you don't see a lot of problems dealing with just a regular trapezoid. But if the legs wind up being congruent, then we have an isosceles trapezoid. And we know that term from triangles. An isosceles triangle had two congruent sides. So an isosceles trapezoid has two congruent legs. So there are a few interesting properties for an isosceles trapezoid. Firstly, 
the diagonals are going to be congruent. So if I drew them in there, those are going to be the same length. Obviously, they don't bisect each other like they did in a parallelogram. But at least we know they're the same length. The other thing we know is that each pair of base angles are congruent. So let me get that out of the picture. And we know that this angle is going to be congruent to this angle. And this angle will be congruent to this angle. So let's try an example. Here's an isosceles trapezoid. Find those four missing pieces. Well, because it's isosceles, we know these are the legs, and those are congruent. So I know that PA is also length 16. The base angles are congruent. So I know if angle T is 64, angle P is also 64. And I know that angle T and angle R are supplementary, so angle R would be 180 minus 64, so 116 degrees for angle R. And angle A is going to be congruent to angle R because those are a pair of base angles. And there you have it. The last idea about trapezoids deals with something called a mid-segment. A mid-segment connects the midpoints of the two legs, the two non-parallel sides. So here's a picture. Now this doesn't have to be an isosceles trapezoid, it's any trapezoid. And if you connect the two midpoints, so the midpoint of this leg and the midpoint of this leg, given that these are your bases, that segment is called a mid-segment. Now, what's true about that? First of all, it's parallel to the bases. And it looks like it should be parallel. What else is true? It turns out that the length of that mid-segment is going to be the average of your two bases base 1 and base 2. We know how to calculate average of two numbers. You add them up and divide by 2. So let's look at a specific example. Find the length of mid-segment EF in this trapezoid. So those are your parallel sides, those are your bases. E and F are midpoints of the legs, so segment EF is a mid-segment. So to calculate the length of that, I'm just going to add the two bases together and divide by 2. So I know the length of EF is 9.5. Let's look at one last example. Not that one. Here we've got a trapezoid. The bases are segment TR and segment PA. The mid-segment is EZ. But instead of me giving you the lengths of the two bases, I'm giving you one of the bases and then the midpoint or the mid-segment length. So I want you to find the length of PA. Well, let me just call that X. So if you wanted to be formal and do it algebraically, you would say that PA plus TR, which is 21, divided by 2 is the length of the mid-segment, which we already know is 27. So I need to solve this. If I multiply both sides by 2 to cancel that, I have the length of PA plus 21 should equal 54. 
And then if I subtract 21 from both sides, that tells me that segment PA must be length 33. Now that's the formal way to do it. Let me give you an easier way to think of it. TR is 21 millimeters long. By the way, you want to put your units on your answer. How much do I have to add to that to get to 27? That's right, I have to add 6. So to get from the mid-segment to the other side, I'm going to have to do the same thing. I need to add 6 again, and that gives me 33. So a lot of students like doing it that way. Okay, you should be set for kites and trapezoids. And now you can work on the worksheet.